In theoretical physics, there are many theories with supersymmetry which also have internal gauge symmetries. Supersymmetric gauge theory generalizes this notion. <laughs> gauge theory A gauge theory is a mathematical framework for analyzing gauge symmetries. There are two types of symmetries, viz, global and local. A global symmetry is the symmetry which remains invariant at each point of a manifold manifold can be either of spacetime coordinates or that of internal quantum numbers. A local symmetry is the symmetry which depends upon the space over which it is defined, and changes with the variation in coordinates. Thus, such symmetry is invariant only locally i.e., in a neighborhood on the manifold. Maxwell's equations and quantum electrodynamics are famous examples of gauge theories. Topic: <inaudible> Supersymmetry. In particle physics, there exist particles with two kinds of particle statistics, bosons and fermions. Bosons carry integer spin values, and are characterized by the ability to have any number of identical bosons occupy a single point in space. They are thus identified with forces. Fermions carry half-integer spin values, and by the Pauli exclusion principle, identical fermions cannot occupy a single position in spacetime. They are identified with matter. Thus, SUSY is considered a strong candidate for the unification of radiation boson-mediated forces and matter. This mechanism works via an operator Q Q known as supersymmetry generator, which acts as follows Q boson equals fermion Display style Q text boson wrangle equals text fermion wrangle Q fermion equals boson display style Q text fermion wrangle equals text boson wrangle. For instance, the supersymmetry generator can take a photon as an argument and transform it into a futino and vice versa. This happens through translation in the parameter space. This superspace is a z two display style math b z underscore two graded vector space w equals w zero w one Display style math call w equals math call w caret zero o plus math call w caret one, where w zero display style math call w caret zero is the bosonic Hilbert space and w one display style math call w caret one is the fermionic Hilbert space. Topic: <laughs> Suzy gauge theory. The motivation for a supersymmetric version of gauge theory can be the fact that gauge invariance is consistent with supersymmetry. The first examples were discovered by Bruno Zumino and Sergio Ferrara, and independently by Abdus Salam and James Strathdee in 1974. Because both the half-integer spin fermions and the integer spin bosons can become gauge particles. Moreover the vector fields and the spinner fields both reside in the same representation of the internal symmetry group. Suppose we have a gauge transformation V mu V mu plus mu 
a display style v underscore mu right arrow v underscore mu plus partial underscore mu a where v mu display style v underscore mu is a vector field and a display style a is the gauge function the main problem in construction of Susy gauge theory is to extend the above transformation in a way that is consistent with Susy transformations. The Wess's Zumino gauge provides a successful solution to this problem. Once such suitable gauge is obtained, the dynamics of the Susy gauge theory work as follows: We seek a Lagrangian that is invariant under the super gauge transformations. These transformations are an important tool needed to develop supersymmetric version of a gauge theory. Then we can integrate the Lagrangian using the Berezin integration rules and thus obtain the action which further leads to the equations of motion and hence can provide a complete analysis of the dynamics of the theory. Topic n equals 1 Susie in 4D with four real generators. In four dimensions, the minimal n equals 1 supersymmetry may be written using a superspace. This superspace involves four extra fermionic coordinates theta 1 theta 2 theta 1 theta 2 Display style theta carrot one theta carrot two bar theta carrot one bar theta carrot two transforming as a two component spinner and its conjugate. Every superfield, i.e. a field that depends on all coordinates of the superspace, may be expanded with respect to the new fermionic coordinates. There exists a special kind of superfields, the so-called chiral superfields, that only depend on the variables theta but not their conjugates. More precisely, d f equals zero. Display style overline d f equals zero. However, a vector superfield depends on all coordinates. It describes a gauge field and its superpartner, namely a whale fermion that obeys a Dirac equation. V equals C plus I theta chi minus I theta chi plus I Two theta two M plus I N minus I two theta two M minus I N minus theta sigma mu theta v mu plus i theta 2 theta lambda minus i 2 sigma mu mu chi minus I theta two theta lambda plus I two sigma mu mu chi plus one two theta two theta two D plus one two white medium square 
C display style V equals C plus I theta Chi I overline theta overline Chi plus tfrac I 2 theta carrot 2 M plus in tfrac I 2 overline theta carrot 2 M in theta Sigma carrot mu overline theta V underscore mu plus I theta carrot 2 overline theta left overline lambda tfrac I 2 overline Sigma carrot Carrot mu partial underscore mu chi right i overline theta carrot two theta left lambda plus tfrac i two sigma carrot mu partial underscore mu overline chi right plus tfrac one two theta carrot two overline theta carrot two left d plus tfrac one two box c right V is the vector superfield prepotential and is real V equals V. The fields on the right-hand side are component fields. The gauge transformations act as V V plus lambda plus lambda display style V to V plus lambda plus overline lambda where lambda is any chiral superfield it's easy to check that the chiral superfield w alpha minus 1 4 d 2 d alpha v Display style W underscore alpha equiv TFRAC one four overline D carrot two D underscore alpha V is gauge invariant. So is its complex conjugate W alpha Display style overline W underscore dot alpha a non-supersymmetric covariant gauge which is often used as the Wess's Zumino gauge. Here, C, chi, M and N are all set to zero. The residual gauge symmetries are gauge transformations of the traditional bosonic type. A chiral superfield X with a charge of Q transforms as X E Q lambda X X E Q Lambda X Display style X to E carrot Q Lambda X Q quad overline X to E carrot Q overline Lambda X Therefore Z minus Q V X is gauge invariant. Here E minus Q V is called a bridge since it bridges a field which transforms under lambda only with a field which transforms under lambda only more generally if we have a real gauge group g that we wish to supersymmetrize we first have to complexify it to gce minus qv then acts a compensator for the complex gauge transformations in effect absorbing them leaving only the real parts this is what's being done in the wess's zumino gauge Topic: Differential superforms. Let's rephrase everything to look more like a conventional Yang-Mills gauge theory. We have a U one gauge symmetry acting upon full superspace with a one superform gauge connection A in the analytic basis for the tangent space. The covariant derivative is given by d m equals d m plus i q a m display style d underscore m equals d underscore m plus i k underscore m integrability conditions for chiral superfields with the chiral constraint d alpha X equals zero 
Display style overline D underscore dot alpha x equals zero. Leave us with D alpha D beta equals F alpha beta equals zero. Display style left overline D underscore dot alpha overline D underscore dot beta right equals F underscore dot alpha dot beta equals zero. A similar constraint for antichiral superfields leaves us with F ab equals zero. This means that we can either gauge fix a alpha equals zero. Display style a underscore dot alpha equals zero, or a alpha equals zero, but not both simultaneously. Call the two different gauge fixing schemes i and two respectively. In gauge i, d alpha x equals zero. Display style overline d underscore dot alpha x equals zero, and in gauge two, d alpha x equals zero. Now the trick is to use two different gauges simultaneously: gauge i for chiral superfields and gauge two for antichiral superfields. In order to bridge between the two different gauges, we need a gauge transformation. Call it E minus V by convention. If we were using one gauge for all fields, XX would be gauge invariant. However, we need to convert gauge I to gauge 2, transforming X to E minus V QX. So, the gauge invariant quantity is Z minus QVX. In gauge I, we still have the residual gauge E lambda where D alpha lambda equals 0 display style overline d underscore dot alpha lambda equals 0 and in gauge 2 we have the residual gauge e lambda satisfying d alpha lambda equals 0 under the residual gauges the bridge transforms as e minus V E minus Lambda minus V minus Lambda Display style E carrot V to E carrot overline Lambda V Lambda Without any additional constraints, the bridge E minus V wouldn't give all the information about the gauge field. However, with the additional constraint f alpha beta display style f underscore dot alpha beta, there's only one unique gauge field which is compatible with the bridge modulo gauge transformations. Now, the bridge gives exactly the same information content as the gauge field. Topic: Theories with eight or more SUSY generators, n greater than one. In theories with higher supersymmetry and perhaps higher dimension, a vector superfield typically describes not only a gauge field and a whale fermion, but also at least one complex scalar field. Topic. See also Super QCD Superpotential D term F term Current superfield Minimal supersymmetric standard model Supersymmetric quantum mechanics <laughs>